Let's look at the Bertrand model. In 1883, a French mathematician Joseph Bertrand criticized Cournot for assuming that the supply of rival duopolis are constant. Instead, he put forth his own model based on the assumption that each seller believes the price of his rival constant, assuming all the other assumptions of the Cournot model the same. Let's look at Bertrand's idea of duopoly in the form of a diagram. Here on the x-axis we have the quantity. OD is the price axis for both sellers A and B. DA is the demand curve of seller A and DB is the demand curve of seller B. The maximum quantity of output that A can sell is OA and the maximum quantity that seller B can sell is OB. So the total competitive output is OA plus OB. And if they happen to share the market jointly, they sell half of OA plus OB, which is OE plus OC, and the price OP. Now suppose there is no collusion between the two, and let's say A is already selling OE units at OP price. Now B thinks that A will not change his price, so he sets a lower price OP1 and attracts some of A's customers and now B sells OF output. Seller A finding that his sales are being reduced, reduces his price to OP2 lower than the price of B that is OP1. He now sells OG output by attracting some of B's customers. Now B reacts by fixing even a lower price OP3 and sells a larger amount of output OH by attracting more of A's customers and this chain of reaction to each other will continue on the part of both A and B till both sell their entire output OA and OB at zero competitive price. This zero competitive price is the stable equilibrium in the Bertrand model and any move to raise the price by either seller A or seller B will lead to the loss of his market to the rival on the assumption that the other seller will not raise his price and continue to charge the competitive price. On the other hand, if seller A or seller B lowers his price below the competitive price, he would be incurring losses. So on both the situations, sellers A and B would not have any tendency to charge a price higher or lower than the competitive zero price and stable equilibrium. This is Bertrand's model. Now let's take a look at what Edgeworth says. Edgeworth in his duopoly model, which was developed in 1897, based his analysis on the assumption that each rival assumes that the price charged by the other remains constant. All the assumptions of the Cournot model are taken into account by him except that the output of the rival remains constant. However, there are three more additions to the Cournot assumptions. One is that suppliers have limited productive capacity. Secondly, two different prices of the products may be quoted in the short run. And thirdly, the total market is divided equally between the two rivals. So given the assumptions of the model, Edgeworth solution is explained in the terms of this figure where the demand curve of seller A is DA and the demand curve of seller B is DB. The common vertical axis OD measures the price. The total market demand is equally divided between the two sellers so that OA is equal to OB. Now they cannot produce more than OA2 and OB2 respectively because of their limited productive capacity that we saw in the assumptions. If firm A first enters the market, it sells OA1 units at OP1 price and earns OA1 EP1 monopoly profits. Since the point A1 lies halfway between points O and A, this price output combination is profit maximizing. Now B enters and assumes that A will not change its price. It therefore sets a lower price just below OP1 in order to attract some customers away from A. Finding that its sales being reduced, seller A will lower its price, assuming that B will not change its price. This will lead to a price war between the two till the price reaches OP2. At this price, both sellers A and B will sell their capacity outputs OA2 and OB2 
and maximize their profits OA to GP2 and OB to FP2 respectively. According to Edgeworth, OP2 should not be regarded as stable price. This is because there is always an incentive for either firms to raise its price to OP1 and earn monopoly profits. And the other firm will also follow suit and raise its price a little above OP2 and earn higher profit. This again restarts the price war between the duopolis. Price in Edgeworth's solution oscillates between OP1 and P2, never stopping for even a moment. Thus, this duopoly situation is unstable equilibrium where the price continuously varies between the competitive level and the monopolistic levels. And the Edgeworth solution is an improvement upon the Cournot model in that it uses price rather than output as the decision variable even though it leads to indeterminacy.